Welcome, welcome to my utility room. Hey, today I'm gonna show you how I do my hot water heater maintenance. Super simple. What we're gonna do is we're going to check the anode rod. We're going to check the pressure release valve so your tank doesn't blow up. And we're gonna drain the tank and clean it out. Get rid of all the duck on the bottom, or at least most of it. All you're gonna need is a few basic tools. You'll need a socket wrench, and you're gonna need a one and one sixteenth inch socket. Uh, you might need an anode rod. And basically what this guy does is he sacrifices his life for the sake of your water, he your water heater. So the water is gonna, the bad stuff in the water is gonna attack this instead of the outside of your tank. That's a really simple way of saying something that I don't understand. Hope it makes sense to you. And you're gonna need some plumbing tape. I don't even really know what you call this stuff. Right? Teflon tape, maybe. Tape. And that's gonna go on the top of this if you need to replace this. Now, on my water heater, it's been about five years since I last replaced it, and I did check it the other day, and it was gnarly nasty. So I need to get a new one. You can get these at Home Depot. I'm sure lots of other places as well. And you may want a breaker bar, uh, just because a socket wrench might not give you enough leverage to break the seal on it when you try to pop this anode rod off. They can get stuck, especially if it hasn't been opened up for years. Uh, if you don't have a breaker bar and it's stuck with this, you can just stick a pipe on the end, get some more leverage. Pow, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. And what else? Oh yeah, you'll need a bucket. And a garden hose. So you're gonna need a socket wrench, a one and a sixteenth inch socket, some tape, some Teflon tape, uh, possibly an anode rod if yours looks bad and I'll show you what a bad one looks like, and a garden hose. If you don't have any of the tools that you might need for this job, check out the description below. I should have links down there for you to grab the stuff that you need. Let's get cracking. Before you drain all the water out of your water heater, it is very important that you turn the burner down on your water heater so that the flame isn't going to kick on while the tank is empty. That could cause a lot of damage. So all you're going to want to do is find the dial with the temperature adjustment. And I would really suggest just making a mental note of where your dial is at before you turn it down. Just so that once you're done and you turn it back on, you don't have to guess at what heat setting to set it to. So on mine, I'm around B. All I'm going to do is just turn it clockwise all the way past slow, all the way to pilot lighting. And just turn it until you can't turn it anymore. And now the burner is not going to kick on. It is going to keep the pilot light on just so that you don't have to relight that again. But that's not going to create enough heat to cause any damage. So just turn it to that until you're done. So now that we got that out of the way, we're ready to, be, to begin. And our first step is going to be to make sure our pressure release valve, I think that's what it's called, is working. So here you can see it, it's this bad boy right here. This is where I'm going to grab my bucket. Basically this thing just keeps your tank from exploding. So kind of important. So I'm just going to pull this lever here. And hopefully a bit of water comes out. And when I release the the handle, the water should stop. So this is just a check. The water came. Z water is stopping, so that's good. That's all I'm gonna do with that. Dope. So next I'm gonna turn off the incoming water supply to my water heater. Now my water heater, as you can see, here it says cold, so the cold is gonna be your input and obviously the hot is gonna be your output. So I need to find my cold pipe. You also just feel it, honestly, it's cold. I'm going to turn the tap off. That's gonna stop water from continuously fill up my water heater because next I'm going to drain the water of this bad boy. We're ready for the next step, draining this bad boy. You can see this down here. Mine has got a little spout. So I'm just gonna hook a guard hose up to it. 
and I'm obviously I'm in the basement. Hello. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I've got a drain over in another room. I'm just gonna run the hose into the drain. If you don't have a, a drain nearby, you could also just open this up, fill a bucket, dump it, fill another bucket. It's gonna take a while, but that's a lot of water. So I'll use a hose. Let's do this. And pointer, the water in your water heater is still going to be hot, most likely, at least quite warm. Depends on how hot you have it set. So don't like open it up on your legs unless you're into that sort of thing. Just don't be that person. Okay, we were on the hose and back. All right, so I ran the hose into my shower drain and open this up. I'm try to open this up. Hello. Alright, so it's open. Now I'll just go check and make sure the water's coming out. And obviously, it doesn't need to be set for most people, but you can't have your hose running like on the stairs. Or even just don't have like big, big loops like this. It's probably not going to work so well, so it's going to have to be pretty flat. The water ain't going to come out the other end. So while my tank is draining, we're going to tackle the anode rod, the big long rod. Um, you're probably going to want to do this before the tank isn't completely empty because the water in the tank is going to give some weight to help support the water heater so that while you're trying to loosen this anode rod the whole tank doesn't turn because that would obviously could mess up your pipes and stuff so don't twist your tank around so we're going to do that while it's draining it's going pretty slow so on my tank yours might be different you might have to even remove the top hopefully not mine is right here pull this out pull this little cap out and the head of the anode rods right here. So we will take our 1 and 16th inch socket on the socket wrench. So let's pop this out, let's see what it looks like. Just do it till, turn it till it's loose, and you just pull it up. Now, if you have a sensitive stomach, look away, it's nasty. <sighs> yeah, she gone. So check out all this fun stuff on here. This thing's definitely seen better days, and like I said, this thing's been in here five years, and where I live, like, we have really hard water. So depending where you live, it might be better, it might be worse. I'm thinking I probably should have changed this sooner and I didn't check it in those five years. I should have. <laughs> Next time, maybe I'll do it sooner. And there might be a sticker on your water heater where you, are you sick of looking at this? Sorry. There might be a sticker on your water heater where you can just write down when you last surfaced your tank. It's helpful to remember. So I just want to show you the difference. This is the old anode rod. This is the new one. Obviously time to be replaced. Anode rods come in different lengths. So you can take a guess. Um, they don't have to go exactly to the bottom of your tank, but the closer they get, the better, obviously, because it's just going to be more surface area for the water to attack. And if you can't get one the exact size, Go for a bit longer and you can cut it off. And in my case, I thought I ordered the right size, but I seem to have screwed up. <laughs> Luckily, you can cut it shorter, but you can't cut it longer. So I'm gonna see if this new one fits in. And by the way, if you live somewhere that has a really low ceiling, you're a node, you can get node rods, anode rods, that have joints so they flex, so you can do it with super low ceiling. So I'm, I'm about three inches too high or so. So I'm just gonna cut off a little bit off of this rod. 
Get ready, Hacksaw. We're going to war. <laughs> so someday when I'm rich and famous, I might buy a vice. But in the meantime, this is my vice. And I'm going to go a bit shorter. I'd rather cut it once than twice. <laughs> Cardio. It's not the easiest thing in the world to cut. But if you're in shape like me, no problem. I thought it was going to be easier than this. Oh my word. Got it. One thing I forgot to mention when you buy the anode rod is to make sure that you take all the stickers off of it and all the guck. You don't want that in your water tank. So you might have to use some goo gun or something, just scrape it off, make sure you get all the glue off. Now hurry up! All right, so once the water is drained out, you should be able to wiggle your tank a little bit just so that you know it's empty. Now we're going to blast it with some cold water and see what comes out of here. The water here isn't even looking super dirty actually. As you can see the water is a little brown coming out now. Just because we've stirred up the stuff on the bottom. And I'm just going to, once it stops, I'm going to put the cap back in and tighten it up. Blast some more water in, release it, and probably just do that until the water is coming out pretty clean. So after we filled the tank back up and we're ready to fire our water heater back on again, all we'll have to do is turn the dial from the pilot lighting setting back to where we had it and it should roar to life and heat your water back up and in a little bit you should have hot water so that's a wrap and that's how you service your hot water heater do this once a year check your node rod replace it if necessary enjoy your hot water